Okay, so I'll start with removing the rear caliper. Okay, so just trying to make sure that the screws are the same here. Okay. And then I will remove the front. So here I have the um, the old front mechanical caliper and also the rear one that come with the uh, Severo P series. For the front, I will replace it with this nice uh, Dura Ace hydraulic brake, and for the rear. I will replace it with this one, this guy, and I just have to move the um, um, the adapter over, right? As you can see here. So let me unscrew this guy um, and put on the new caliper. So this is the old caliper here, and you, if you can see, there's just two screws holding. The, uh, the old mounting plate in place. Wow, and this is super tight. Let me make sure I'm not pushing the wrong direction. So the, the, the screw on the mounting plate of the caliper is so tight that I don't want to break it. So I'm just going to um, basically mount it on a vise here and take it out this way. Just make sure I'm not, break, not going to break it. Okay, here we go. So it's just a little bit tight because I was worried that I'll be breaking it. It's not too bad and then I'm just going to do it this way. Okay, all right here we go. Okay. 
so I'm loosening them up and I can pick this out from here. Because sometimes you just never know when you work on stuff that you'll be breaking it. So I just want to be super careful here. And here you go. And this is how, so this is, that goes the old caliper. And then this is how um, the new one will be fitted in. Just like this. And before I put it on, I think there's a, this, I'm just going to test fit it. I think this will should work just fine. Actually, I think I, I have my own set of screw from Shimano that I should be using. But I think there's also something that I need to measure. So let me just take a look at the instructions before I proceed. All right, so we will first install the front caliper. And just to give you an idea, this is what the original caliper looks like it's a 160 millimeter one uh, mechanical wire and i'm going to replace it with a dual race uh, which basically is going in in the um, in the same position so because i'm using uh, 160 millimeter so i don't really have to flip the mounting plate around right because if you want to use like 180 then you have to flip this around so i'm just going to install this as this um over um, the same location so i'm just going to get some screws and set this in place so these are the screws that comes from uh the factory from shimano And I'm not going to tighten it too much because I still need to install the brake lines and then I have to um, calibrate um, and, and just make sure that it's not rubbing the disc at the end. So I'm just kind of just set it, um, just hand tighten it to a point where it's just tight enough for the rest of the installation but not really um, torque it up too high. Um, so. To install this, the uh, proper torque, it, I think, is 6 to 8 uh, Newton meter. Okay, and the, the top part is actually interesting because um, there is this ring um, that you have to install on top. Let me try to get in focus here. So you see that there, the ring, the bottoms of the ring, um, there is this, um, this part sticking out, and that will go into this part which I'm going to give you a closer look here. So you can see that like just down here. Um, let me turn on, see if I can turn on the flash, but I can't. Let me just zoom in so you can see this part down there, right? So the way it works is that um, I will, um, before I tighten it too much, I'll put the snap ring over and then I will um, tighten that part up. Okay, so that's tight enough. So the way it will work is it will just go over um, the screw here and then, and then you basically press it into the hole um, below. Okay, so that's the, the the front brake caliper. I do have to loosen up these guys and um, 
to do um, to basically um, get the wire set up and then uh, and then put in the mineral oil and while I'm here I'll also figure out like let me zoom out a little bit like how long the brake cable should be so right now it's super long um, and I have to disconnect the mount and basically turn the turn the frame sideways to the max to just try to get an idea how much do I need this to go so probably somewhere like down here that should be good okay so I'm just gonna remind this again okay so um, let's take a look at the rear caliper now All right, so in the front here, um, I have cut the, uh, basically cut the brake cable and I put in an insert and the connected insert over here. I got the olive and then the uh, flare nuts here. And now I'm just going to basically push down this wire to make sure it is fully inserted into the caliper and then push, push down the olive. And then I'm just going to, um, Start turning the the, the flare nut. Okay, then I'll start tightening it. Tighten it down to uh, five to seven newton meter. Okay, maybe one more. Oh, that feels pretty tight here. Okay. All right, I think that's good. So. Now basically the front caliber is uh, fully installed. Just gonna show you over here what it looks like. And you can see that the, the flare nuts is now completely um, inserted here. And uh, I did give a little bit of slack here because I just don't want to run the brake cable too tight and I also wanted to be able to um, loosen up the, the shifter here later on so that I can just check and make sure everything is set up correctly. Um, but this is what I have um, on, the, on, the, on the front brakes. I'll make some beginner mistakes here. I wanted to run some slack, but I think I'm really um, running the brake line a bit too long. Um, I should really be like measuring it right now even with just that, like I don't want that much slack, right? But with a little bit of slack, um, I should really be kind of cutting the, the, the brake line like around this point. Um, so I'm just going to do that now to just cut it around here. Um, make 
sure, let me just measure again. Just making sure I get this right this time. using the tool to cut the brake line and you can also see what it looks like once the um, once the olive is fully tightened here you can see that the shape is already changed and it just get completely compressed but I'm going to waste this one and put in the new olive and it's good that I have some spare olive available um, that I brought so I'm just going to cut the wires here can see here this is what the um, once it's fully compressed this is what it looks like okay Insert here that I'll try to fit in. And maybe I have a little bit too much grease on this cable. So one time, sometimes I notice with the Shimano tool is that, uh, as you can see here, the insert doesn't go in the whole way. And I think that's because, so the way it works is it's trying to grip the the cable here, right? Um, and sometimes I just feel like there's not enough, um, there's not enough grip, uh, grip. so. Make sure I do this again. Now I probably have to hammer this in a little bit more. Yes, yeah, so you can see that the the brake line is moving, and I'm trying to compress this. So what I'll do is just push this in, and I'll probably put a clamp down there, and, and maybe I just need to make sure that there is. in true enough What I'll do now is, before I press, th press this in, I'm just going to use the clamp, the clamp here to hold this in place. Yeah, that looks a lot better. So here you can see that the it's fully done. Look, looks good. So 
but that's the new olive here and I'm just going to reinstall this uh, cable so now it has less uh, slack than before right so this part is just like the part I showed you before so I'm not going to record it all right so I reduced the slack in there in the brick line as you can see here there's just a little bit of slack but not too much and I have reinstalled the, um, the cable here as you can see over here the new brick cable is now fully installed and I'm going to start uh, bleeding the bricks so the first thing that I've done is removing the caliper that is that was on the, that was on the um, was on the uh, sorry remove the brake pads that were on the caliper and they look something like this right so these are the this is the um, the brake pads that come um, come with the dual race and and the way it works is it's actually pretty easy they just uh, essentially they just kind of sandwich like this over here right so I, I just removed the locking pin. Uh, the locking screw and there's a pin on the other side. I remove them and just slide it like this. And now I'm going to put the um, insert the 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 block here. They come with the uh, the brake uh, bleed kit kit, and I'll just just kind of loosely screw this in. Just making making sure that that is okay. All right. This. And now um, I need to get some parts, and we'll start uh, bleeding the the brakes. Right. So we finally get to the exciting part of uh, bleeding the fun bricks. So first, I will uh, remove the, the bleed nut here from um, from the shifters. So we'll be doing the first, the front brake first, and then with the, whoa, got awfully excited here. And the key thing here is also making sure that um, the washer, as you can see, is there. So it's good and then fly away. Um, so. And since we're using um, um, the TT shifter, there's no need to install an adapter. The funnel would just go right in and I'm using, the, the kit comes with two set of funnels. So I'm using, I'm not sure what you can see here. This is a BR002 for the ST type shifters. And this should just go right in like this. Doesn't seem to fit, so let me see. Hmm. Okay. That's strange. So I have to be out zero zero three here. Okay, so for whatever reason. I am using the BL003 here and it just fits through. Um, all right, so uh, I'm, I'm not going to install a stopper here yet on the, um, let me just go up a little bit here, on, on the, um, on the vesifer here because I'll be uh, using a syringe to push the, the, um, the fluid from the bottom. So this is what I have, and I'm going to fill this with uh, the brick oil now. So I end up just using a cup to uh, pour in the brick fluid and then getting it into the syringe. And here I'm just going to start um, tightening, tightening it. It's going to be hand tightened and it's normal to have a gap here. So don't push too hard. And I'm just going to um, just put a tiny more into the cup because I'll be filling the um, the reservoir on the top later on. So I just need to make sure there's enough um, 
brake fluid that I can use. Okay, so let's come over here. So I'll now attach the, um, I basically get the, the bleed nuts uh, cover out and then I'm going to attach the syringe here. I'm going to just loosen up the, the bleed nuts by a quarter turn is a seven millimeter. that's all I need it and I'll start slowly pushing the fluid and actually I did need to do one I should have done one more thing which is um, just I should have just push push the fluid as much as I can so I'm not injecting air and I have a plastic back here so I can also throw away some of the fluid that I don't need Okay. All right. Okay, so I will insert this over here now and I will start pushing. Okay, it looks like it's not really going in so let me just loosen it up just a tiny bit more I think I probably put in way too much fluid in the syringe uh, but that's okay because we have to then start pushing some of this fluid out later on okay so this part is done. I'm just going to tighten up the bleed nuts here. Okay. And what I'll do is, uh, and I should probably put some newspaper on the floor because now I got uh, lots of oil on the floor. And now I'll start disconnecting this from the syringe. Now I have the um, syringe attached to a plastic bag. And then I'm going to start doing the reverse, which is um, letting the air basically out from the top um, by opening up the bleed nuts and just letting, waiting a little bit for, for, whoa, for air to come out. And also start the, bleeding the air from the top, just opening up the sky, tightening up, just kind of, Letting the air out. I wish there's a better way I can attach this so this is not coming out so loosely.
not really seeing any air bubbles coming out, so I'm not sure whether I'm doing everything right. Let me just let loose of this guy. And Okay, I'm seeing some tiny bubbles in the top finally, but not really seeing a lot of bubbles. Right. So I'm just here for now and just double checking the instruction, make sure I'm doing this. So right. according to the instruction, I should just uh, initially open up the bleed nuts here and just let the um, just let the uh, the air bubbles come out naturally so I do see that the oil, the oil is flowing down even though it's super slow just drain this guy out and then I would just um, Basically with the, this is the part that's hard to do unless, unless I can. So basically I should de with this depress, quickly loosen up and tighten the, uh, the bleed nuts. Okay. And I should also do it in, um, like, I'll do it two or three times and then I'll change to a different position. And this part is going to be tricky oh, because I need some way of holding down. I wish there's a better way I can hold down this, this nut down here. Maybe I should just push this in a little bit more. Oh, okay. There we go. Yeah, so that's why it's so painful for me. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is to just doing a similar thing, but with a different angle. So I'm just going to tilt the bright to the front a little bit. Just raising the bike. And this part is actually hard to do for a single person. But um, figure it out. Just Maybe I should just first try lowering it down to a different angle. Okay, so with the, with the handle to press, I'm just going to loosen this up and tighten it. So keeping an eye on the on the rest of her, making sure I have enough brake uh, brake fluid. Also doing trying to see if there's any. Additional uh, air that's coming out. I do see some air bubbles coming out in the bottom. Okay, I'm going to refill the rest of her just a tiny bit. I do feel like their um, the handle is getting firmer. Okay, now the hardest part is, or maybe what I can do is to. Um, since I'm all by myself here so I'm going to raise it by 
putting it over a block of wood while keeping an eye on the, the funnel um, just making sure that there's enough going on in here and then I'll do the same of uh, seeing the air coming out so it's just kind of do what Shimano said hold this while I loosen this up Not really seeing any more bubbles. Okay. All right. So, not really seeing more air bubbles coming out. And then, um, the way the Shimano manual said is, I'll just operate the handle without going the full way, like this, to see if there's any air bubbles coming out. And when there's no air bubble coming out, I'll just go the whole way. And this is as far as I can go. So I think it's, it feels pretty, pretty good actually, pretty stiff. And I'm just going to change the angle a little bit here, just lower it a little bit more, just to make sure that, um, yep, oh, that feels pretty good. Okay, so I think I'm done here. So I'll start to wrap up. So the first thing I'll do is to is to you know make sure that the uh, yep, the bleed nuts is tightened and then I'll just loosen up the the tube from below and put this bleed nut cover back in place and then on the top I will um, in the stopper here and they also have they also have a stand like this so there's a good way you can um, put the funnel when it's not in use so I put in the stopper just slowly undo it and this part just have to be super careful because you want to make sure there's enough uh, brake fluid at the top so that's um, when you're putting the, the nuts and the washer back on, you're not introducing air back into the system. Okay, so I'm just gonna put it like this. And here I'm putting the nuts back in. Let me get a slightly better angle here. First, we make sure that the washer, the washer is still in place. Just going to put this over here, and the idea is here. You don't want to over tighten this guy. You kind of want to be gentle. By the way, this is a 2.5 millimeter wrench. 
that I use. And I'll probably clean this up, wipe this down later on. But um, so that's how I finish the, um, the left side. Just making sure I don't over tighten, but it's tighten enough. Okay, great. So yeah, feels pretty good. Now let's do the, the rear brakes. Oh, and also, um, before I do that, I have to un undo the block. So um, let me just zoom out here. Maybe zoom in here a little bit. Just have to undo this guy. clip here the other side nice 